everyone, I am Ms. A.P. Mkundwane, Wholesale and Retail Lecturer at Khret Sibanda Tivet College, the Standerton Campus. Today, I'm going to be delivering a Level 2 Wholesale and Retail lesson. This is the third lesson where we are still continuing and doing the last part of Module 1, which looks at the overview of Wholesale and Retail. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to do the following. You'll be able to identify the internal and external support functions that are applicable to a wholesale or retail outlet, which is including but not limited to the following. Human resources, buying and planning, marketing or advertising, finance, IT, property and maintenance, just to name a few. The rest of them, we will look at them as we proceed with the lesson. Let's get to it. Internal and external support functions of the wholesale or retail outlet. So basically, in order to operate effectively and at a minimum cost, organizations normally centralize a number of functions within the organizations that are required by their different branches. They do that instead of decentralizing all of these functions. So when we speak about the concept of centralize, that means to take place at one place, usually at the head office of the business. And then when we speak about decentralized, that basically means to take place usually at each branch. So what this means is that it takes place, the activity takes place at the store level of the business. There are nine support functions that we are going to look at, which are as follows. The first function is buying and planning, followed by logistics, followed by marketing or advertising, maintenance, finance and accounts, human resources, consultants and service providers, payroll, and the last one is IT or communication. So with these nine support functions, we are going to look at them from two perspectives. The first perspective, we are going to look at them from a perspective of a chain or group retailer. Then the second perspective, we are going to look at them from a perspective of an independent or small retailer. So we are, going to, we are then going to look at whether that function is performed internally meaning within the borders of the business, or it is outsourced, which is externally normally provided by external individual which the business pays to perform that particular service. So let's look at the first one, buying and planning. So in the buying and planning department, the buying department at the head office in a chain environment finds new suppliers, decides what lines to take on, and also, they negotiate the price at national level. And then from there, the planners then decide which branch should keep different products and also what quantity should go to each store. So with this function, in a chain or retail or group retailer, this is a function that is performed internally. And then in an independent or small retailer, this is usually performed by the owner of the business. Secondly, let's look at logistics. So logistics is a name that is given to the department that looks after the supply chain, the distribution center, as well as the trucks. Basically deals with the transportation of goods in the business. And then from a perspective of a chain or group retailer, it can be outsourced or owned by the organization. And then in an independent or small retailer, the stock might be collected by the owner or delivered by the supplier in an instance where the owner does not have a vehicle. The third one, marketing or advertising. So with this department, this is the department that is responsible for promoting the organization as well as the product of the organization. And they usually handle the advertising as well. So, they design the company's advertisements and pamphlets and all things that are used to promote the organization as well as the sales that the business normally runs. So with this function, in chain 
or group retailers. It's either performed internally or it can be outsourced as well, depending on the resources that the organization has. And then in an independent or small retailer, same concept applies. It can either be done internally or it can be outsourced as well. The next one that we are going to look at is maintenance. This is a department that looks for sites, for new branches, negotiates rentals and leases, and is responsible for maintaining the properties of the business. And then they obviously cannot go to each and every store countrywide to fix problems, but they arrange for services to do that at negotiated or rather reasonable prices. So in a chain or group retailer, this is outsourced. And then independent or small retailer, this would also be outsourced as well. The next one that we're going to look at is finance as well as accounts. So the finance or accounts department is responsible for paying accounts, paying suppliers, and balancing the financial accounts of the business. So anything that is related to the accounts as well as the finances of the business is dealt with in this department. So these are usually internal, but by law, they should be external where there are auditors as well as accountants who check the accounts of the business. And then in an independent or small retailer, these are usually outsourced as this is a specialized type of function. And the next one that we are going to look at is human resources. So this is the function or rather the department that looks after and manages any people related activities within the business. So in a chain or group retailer, this is usually internal and it is centralized in a chain store environment. Remember, in an instance where a function is centralized, it means that it takes place at one place, which is usually the head office of the business. And then the independent or small retailer, this function would be performed by the owner and sometimes the owner would need to consult with an external specialist. The next one that we are going to look at is consultants and service providers. So when we are speaking about consultants and service providers, these are the individuals that are external to the organization and they offer services that cannot be handled internally by the business. Typical examples of that would be the likes of your internet providers, ESCOM, so on and so forth. And then in a chain or group retailer, this function is always external. And also, same concept applies. In an independent or small retailer, this function is always internal as well. And the second last function that we are going to look at is payroll. So with payroll, that's where time and attendance records are sent. It is where staff pay is basically made. So this function is normally centralized as there are certain legislations that govern hours of work, overtime, and pay, as well as takes that need to correctly be controlled. So in an instance of a chain or group retailer, this function is done internally or even in other businesses, it is outsourced. In a perspective of the independent or small retailer, this function is normally performed by the owner. The last function that we are going to look at, it's IT or communication. So this department is responsible for managing the computer systems in the business. This is the department that makes sure that each and every branch uses the same computer system within the business. And then in a group or chain retailer, this service is not, this function is normally performed internally or it is outsourced. And if it's an independent or small retailer, this is a function that is normally performed by the owner. All right, that will be the end of lesson three. So now what we are going to do, we are going to conclude by recapping all the things that we did for module one, right from lesson one, lesson two, and end off with what we just covered now in lesson three. Let's get to it. So for module one, which basically looks at the overview of the wholesale as well as retail industry, these are the following things that we covered. 
we looked at the different concepts that are used within the wholesale and retail industry. That's where we looked at retail, wholesaling, as well as distribution. That's where we best define that retail is the sale of goods or products to customers in small quantities for their own consumption and use. And that's where we said wholesaling is basically the purchasing of products or goods in large quantities, which are then split into smaller quantities and then sold to retailers so that they can resell them to customers for a profit, obviously. We also looked at the concept of distribution, where we say that distribution is the act of sharing something between a number of people or organizations. We also had a look at the supply chain. With the supply chain, that's where we see that a supply chain is a set of businesses, people, as well as resources that are involved in getting the raw materials turned into the final products, as well as ensuring that these products are delivered to the end user of the product, which is the retail customer. So with the supply chain, we also looked at how the supply chain basically works. So from there, we looked at the six different types of people, resources, or businesses that are involved in the supply chain. That's where we looked at farmer or raw, raw materials, manufacturer or supplier, buyer and supplier's wrap, wholesaler, distribution center, as well as supplier, retail store, as well as the customer. Please also do remember to refer to page four of your prescribed textbook for the supply chain diagram. We also looked at the role of various stakeholders within the wholesale and retail industry. That's where we looked at your owners and shareholders, the staff, suppliers, outside service companies, government, customers, banks, welfare organizations, community, unions, wholesale and retail sector education and training, as well as competitors. What we also had a look at, we also looked at how each of these suppliers would negatively be affected if the business was to close its doors. So, if a business was to close down its doors, the owners and shareholders of the business would lose their investment in the business. Because obviously, in that instance, it would mean that the business no longer makes a profit. And the second one, staff members. Remember, these are the people that are employed by the business and they're earning a salary. So if a business was to close its doors, they would lose their jobs. And when they lose their jobs, it means that their families would also be affected since they are also considered as stakeholders. And then suppliers. So if a business was to close down its doors, suppliers would also suffer because it would mean that now they've got one less outlet that they are supplying their goods too. Then the next one, outside service companies. So with outside service companies, they would lose this business as a customer and they would also lose their source of income, which is equally applicable to suppliers. And then the government. In the previous lesson, we mentioned that the main source of revenue for the government is tax. And we also mentioned that the more profits the business makes, it's the more tax it would be able to pay. So if this business was to, if a business was to close down, it means that the government would lose their source of income from this particular business and customers. So if a business was to close down its doors, customers wouldn't have the choice of products or the convenience that that particular business provided and would have to look for another shop which is selling the same thing that the business that has closed down was actually selling. And then with banks. So banks, they would lose a source of income that previously allowed them, that previously allowed them to collect interest on loans as well as service fees for the services provided. Then with welfare organizations, they would also suffer through losing donations that the store made to them. And the second last one, the community. The community. So if a business was to close down its doors, the individuals who are employed by that business within the community, they would lose their jobs. And lastly, the sector education and training authority, they would lose a source of income in an instance where a business closes down its doors. 
what we also covered, we also looked at recognizing the sectors, subsectors, as well as categories within the wholesale and retail industry. That's where we say that we've got two different types of sectors, which is the formal as well as the informal sector. We also looked at the different subsectors, which were the five main subsectors in which all retail businesses can basically be grouped. That's where we said there is furniture, CFTA, which is clothing, footwear, textiles, as well as accessories, food, specialty subsector, as well as fuel. So with the first one, the furniture, this grouping is one which all the furniture outlets fall under, like Louise stores, OK Furniture, so on and so forth. And the second one, CFTA. This includes any store selling clothing, materials, shoes, or even accessories, like your Woolworth stores, Sports Scene, Mr. Price, and then the third one is food. So this includes all the supermarkets and shops that sell food as well as groceries. What's also important to note with this particular subsector is that we do not include any takeaway stores or restaurants because they fall under the catering industry, which is also known as the food and beverage industry. They do not fall under the wholesale and retail industry. And then the fourth one, Speciality subsector. This is a very large grouping of outlets and actually consists of all the stores that sell any goods, except for those that we've already explained in the previous groups. So it would include things such as your jewelry stores like your American Swiss, music stores like your Musica, builders outlets like your cash build. And the last one, fuel subsector. These are retailers which basically sell petrol like your engine garage and BP garage. And then from that section, we also covered the categories of retailers within the industry. Those, are, those include groups or chains, independence, SME, franchises, discounters, as well as convenience stores. And then finally, we also looked at wholesale and retail operational and support functions. So that's where we also mentioned that we've got eight different types of operational functions, which is inclusive of receiving and dispatch, shelf fillers or merchandisers, sales assistants as well as sales consultants, cashers or till operators, cash office, credit office, administration, as well as management. So in a large store, this department is normally divided into two, with the receiving clerk as well as a dispatch clerk. So the receiving clerk, that's the individual who is responsible for handling the goods that are coming into the store, such as the deliveries that are made by suppliers. And the dispatch clerk is the individual who deals with the products that are leaving the store to be delivered to the home of the customers, to be delivered to other stores, or damaged stock to be returned to the supplier. However, in a small store, only one person can be responsible for both receiving as well as dispatching. The second operational function, shelf fillers or merchandisers. These are the people who are responsible for filling the shelves and ensuring that the shelves are never empty in the floor of the business. The third operational function is sales assistants as well as sales consultants. So sales consultants are the staff members who normally stand behind the counter or walk among the racks of clothing and assist customers with any queries that they might possibly have. That also includes finding out if the products that the customers are looking for are actually available at a different store. The fourth one, cashers or till operators. So cashers or till operators are staff members that work on the tills, that record the sales transactions and process different kinds of payments with the customer. The first one, cash office. 
So, the staff member who occupies this office is classified as a cash office clerk. And this individual is responsible for cashing up together with the cashers, balancing cash, preparing the deposit, as well as controlling change. So the next one is credit office. So with a credit office, a credit office we find in businesses where goods can be bought through higher purchase agreements or accounts. And also, there will be a credit clerk who is responsible for managing the accounts of the customers. And the second last one is administration. So with administration, obviously, every retail business has paperwork that has to be completed. And this has got to do with the day-to-day -day running of that retail store. And making sure that those records are managed properly is very important. Examples of paperwork that could be completed are as follows. Controlling timesheets, completing overtime claims, as well as keeping leave and sick leave records. And finally, what we looked at in this module, particularly for lesson three, we looked at the internal as well as external support functions of the wholesale or retail outlet. That's where we cover the nine support functions, which are buying and planning, logistics, marketing or advertising, maintenance, finance and accounts, human resources, consultants and service providers, payroll, as well as IT or communication. That will be the end of our lesson and that is the end of module one. Thank you very much for tuning in. Goodbye.